SNPs are easy to find. You just sequence a whole bunch of people. And with modern microarrays, they're incredibly easy and inexpensive to genotype. But they're not the only type of genetic variation. One type of variation that is particularly important in forensic DNA analysis are called tandem repeats, where a single sequence is copied many times, one copy right after another. And so let's say that person one has one repeat, but person two has five repeats. And again, it should be pretty easy to see how PCR could be used to analyze these loci, right? I just take a pair of primers, I use PCR to amplify these two loci, I amplify this locus for these two people, and I run it on a gel. And the person that has one repeat, PCR results in a very small band, and that band runs quite fast, quite far down the gel. The person that has many repeats has a much larger piece of DNA that gets amplified by PCR, and they have a band that runs much more slowly on a gel. And it turns out that you can automate all of this, and that modern instruments can analyze 20 or 30 common polymorphisms all at once and all quite rapidly. And if there's substantial genetic variation between person to person at all of these loci, then the combination of these genotypes can be used as kind of a genetic fingerprint, almost uniquely identifying a person, say from some DNA evidence that was left at a crime scene, for example. And so these kinds of repeat, most of these kinds of repeated sequences are quite small. However, we've recently begun to appreciate that substantial proportions of the genome can be duplicated or deleted or inverted or shuffled around, right? That each piece that is copied or deleted or moved may be thousands or even tens or hundreds of thousands of bases. And these kinds of polymorphisms are called either copy number variants, or the term I prefer is structural variation. Full disclosure, I actually got my PhD in a lab that studies this stuff, and so um, I will uh, not go on and on about it, but I will just leave you with a note that if single nucleotide polymorphisms or SNPs account for maybe like one tenth of one percent of the differences between one person and another, structural variation has been found to account for, or to affect, I should say, maybe 10% of the genome, which is an enormous amount of sequence difference. And we're still discovering the effects of insertions, deletions, inversions, rearrangements, and um, the effects that those variations have on human phenotypes.